Hey, CP, did you see this? Look, if it ain't official Dana J, Levi for Kelly, Prima Donna News, I don't even want to see it. Just take the call. Isn't it strange how some of us watch this whole internet investigation unveil who people assume shot takeoff and all these other people who they say are associated with the person involved. But it's also interesting when you watch the news and media coverage as to what information they're putting out when it comes to these people that have been arrested and not actually charged with the murder of takeoff, but instead are getting charges for being in possession of a weapon and or discharging a weapon, that doesn't necessarily mean that person is the suspect in the shooting and or that this person is the actual suspect who's going to be taking the fall for this homicide. Now, I'm looking on the internet and we can see a lot of people who know this individual who happens to be a DJ in Houston vouching for his character. So again, when I challenge people to look into these allegations and things we see being put on these platforms such as social media and YouTube, that should not be triggering for some people to be so negative when, hey, like I said, they could do their own research. But the major point that I wanted to bring is, again, just like we saw in the case against Robert Kelly, we saw this man be in the position for a bond. The difference is they denied Robert Kelly's bond talking about he was a danger to the community. Meanwhile, you have this suspect who's being granted a high bond in which, in my opinion, tells a lot. Stay tuned as I make this video make sense. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Reka Mutaraj in for Sherman Chow. The man accused of murdering Migos rapper Takeoff was in court today. Authorities say suspect Patrick Clark was seen on camera firing a gun the night of the murder outside the downtown bowling alley. Stephanie Whitfield joins us from outside the courthouse with the latest. Patrick Clark's hearing today was just a formality, but he did appear before a judge. His bond is set at $2 million in the high profile murder case. His attorneys asked for a new hearing next week to get that bond amount lowered to protect his constitutional rights. In probable cause court Friday, it was revealed that Clark was allegedly caught shooting his gun on camera while holding a wine bottle, and he was accused of having plans to leave the country. Clark's defense attorneys say that's true, but it was a planned vacation to Mexico. That was something that was already pre-planned and it was counseled before he was arrested. So I think that's important. He wasn't trying to go anywhere. His attorney reiterated that Clark is innocent until proven guilty. Prosecutors did not speak to reporters after the hearing. Again, Clark is charged with the murder of Migos rapper Takeoff. And he'll be back in court for his next hearing on Wednesday of next week. Now, it don't take a genius to run through my previous content throughout my channel and notice all of the judicial conflicts of interest and misconduct I've laid out on my platform. And you notice, no matter how many times I give you reasonable doubt when it comes to the narrative that everybody wants to talk about but don't want to hit on the key points that led me to believe this whole case against Robert Kelly is some bullshit. So when they tried to paint the R&B king as a Rico and all these weird ass people just started to emerge on the Internet. And every time you try to keep people on task and on topic, they just got to come out here and incriminate this man. And nobody stops to say, well, if these people are believed to be the enterprise of Robert Kelly and he is the Rico why the fuck aren't they charged? Oh, 
That's right, because people like to conceal the crimes that a lot of people involved in this R. Kelly case involved themselves in trying to hang Robert Kelly. So when I came out here doubting, giving you reasonable doubt as to why I don't think this man is a threat to the community, his rights are being violated, and it's mighty funny other individuals who are charged with way worse crimes than the allegations that have been about R. Kelly for years and years are getting bonds while this man was denied that luxury. Instead, people continue to further this notion that these witnesses were being threatened. And when I make myself the prime example as to how individuals who attempt to either speak out for Robert Kelly or make sense to these allegations being waged against him, these people just start to target you out of nowhere. They'll have a million and one excuses to why they keep fucking with you, but won't leave you the fuck alone. They'll keep talking about you, but you ain't supposed to respond. And people don't understand when I say, I ain't R. Kelly. You talk about me. I'm coming for you. Now, you can hide behind a lot of individuals trying to stir the pot, but keep this in mind. All of this Internet activity we saw in this case against Robert Kelly is the same type of shit we're seeing across the board in many other cases. A lot of people are on this Internet playing investigative journalists when at the end of the day, people like me come out here to document the inconsistencies so that people can at any time come back and confer with the facts, people's perception, and what actually occurred on these platforms. Now, anybody with common sense should know nobody should have to issue a gag order on individuals involved in a case and or being investigated when clearly the police don't even give you certain information. So when you have bloggers like uh, Tasha K who go above and beyond to violate people's rights with the tips they're getting from janky ass people and you got people going above and beyond trying to prove remedial points linking up with janky ass people, it again should be very obvious why I question the things that I see putting on these platforms, especially when people's main intent was to later delete the shit that they put out here. Now, as a supporter of Robert Kelly, that is exactly why my approach is a little bit different when it comes to other individuals. It's not for me to do investigative reporting. It's not for me to sit here and do the FBI's job. But when so much information was skipped around in order to put all the focus on one man while trying to paint him as a danger to the community, meanwhile, all the people that's out here committing terroristic acts are on the prowl doing the most make this shit make sense a man they're putting out here as a suspected killer can get a bond but r&b king can't get a bond based on years and years of people's commentary and opinions on what they feel he has or hasn't done but does that change due process does that change the way the law works or are you realizing this same formula being so let's make this shit on make all sense. these cases you got robert kelly who's been deemed a danger who's been denied bond even though obviously this has a conflict with his defense and obviously denies him his constitutional rights. But then on the other hand, you got this suspect, as the news tells you, even though they're leaving out the point, what they're charging him with doesn't mean he's the actual shooter. So if I just apply a little common sense, I can't say this is accurate as to what they're doing, but common sense would tell me this is a way for them to see who and if somebody is going to bond out this individual considering, as I pointed out long time ago, when it came to Robert Kelly, we see how these officials are trying to maneuver with these RICO charges. And if you don't have the evidence to prove it, why not throw a conspiracy around it? You'll get a conviction, right?
especially when you can control the opposition and control what people see. And then on top of that, put all these janky ass people out here to keep fueling negativity. Make that shit make sense. See, what people fail to realize about me is I don't, como se dice, give a fuck. (laughs) 